Hey guys, how's it going? I hope all of you are doing great today. Check it out guys, today we are back on our survival island and in today's episode we are working on our iron farm. That's right, like we said in the previous video. So we are first of all going to collect a bunch of villagers, then we're going to create a temporary breeder and breed them all up. After that we're going to work on our iron golem killing chamber and lastly we're going to create two iron farms, not one, but two, right over our island. This episode is going to be packed with content guys, trust me on that one. So I hope you're ready, and if not, then I guess you know what to do. Grab your popcorn and grab your favorite designated beverage, and then let's get this episode started. Alright guys, I hope you're comfortable, because today is going to be a longer episode. I don't know if I'll always be able to keep the episodes this long, simply because I had to put something around like 6 or 7 hours of just playing Minecraft into this episode, and that's not even counting the time I'll have to put into editing this video, but hey, you know what? <laughs> I hope you're happy, so I guess don't forget to smash the like button guys if you're enjoying this series. So like I said in the introduction, today we are constructing our iron golem farms because we need the iron guys, we just need them for future projects. And as all of you know, hopefully, <laughs> to spawn iron golems we need villagers, that's right. So the first thing that we did was actually head off to the desert village that we discovered in the previous episode and then try to trap all of the villagers in some minecarts so that we can transport them to our island safely. And let me tell you guys, working with villagers is a pain, oh my god. I mean, you can't put a leash on them, you can't lure them, they just run around everywhere going where you don't want them, and it, it really is horrible, guys. And then, you know, in the end, when you actually have them in a minecart and try to break it, they just sometimes appear in a completely random place, like, for example, diagonally across where you broke the minecart, in another direction, I don't know. And it really just was a pain in the end, but <laughs> I think in the end we did manage to get all the villagers safely into the nether. And yeah, we already had a minecart tunnel prepared to transport them to our island, which did work a little better than trapping them in the end. Also another bug that I encountered was that the villagers seemed to be invisible the first time I went through the portal. I mean, I could hear them, but it just seemed like they weren't there, so the first thought I had was that they had spawned somewhere around in the nether rack or in a cave or something like that, and I was pretty scared that they were going to die on me, so I started breaking the blocks all around me in the hopes of finding them, and as soon as I did that, I think like 10 or 15 seconds later, they all started appearing directly in front of the portal, and because I broke all of the nether rack around them, of course, they had to run into the nether and all around the area, so I had to go around and trap them all again, and that was a pain, guys. It was really frustrating at first, but I think in the end we did manage to get all of the villagers over to our little island. I think one of them had to die, but I think that's alright. And we trapped them in a little merry-go-round at first so that they wouldn't run away, and yeah, it looked a little funny in the end. So yeah, I guess we got a few villagers, but unfortunately there weren't enough for the iron farm that we wanted to build. In the end we only had like 5 or 6 villagers or something like that, and we need at least 20 or something to start on our iron farms for this episode. So what we did was we started to work on a temporary villager breeder, and the design that we're going for here was built by iOSR100, who, by the way, is actually a German YouTuber, that's right. So it was quite interesting to watch a German tutorial for Minecraft for a change. Now don't worry guys, I know the breeder pretty much looks like, yeah, like crap right now for lack of a better word, but it really is only there for a short amount of time, and once we have enough villagers bred up for our farm, we're just gonna tear the whole thing down and just make the island look pretty again. So the way the breeder works is you have two farmer villagers on a field of carrots at the top who basically harvest the carrots and toss them around each other so that they can start breeding. Because yeah, I guess for those who don't know, to make babies in Minecraft, you gotta throw carrots at your partner, that's right. Come on, yes, yes, just make a baby, come on, just, just make a baby guys, come on, come on. 
Just please work. Just make a baby already. Come on. Oh, all right. It was late when I was recording this, but everything finally worked out and we got ourselves our first villagers bred up. Now to get the baby villagers separated from the bigger bunch, there are actually some gaps at the side of the farm which are just high enough for a baby to fit through, but in the end leave the adults at the top so they can keep harvesting and I guess throw carrots at each other, that's right. <laughs> so in theory, after an hour or so, you'll still have the two farmers at the top who will keep on breeding, and what you'll be left with are a whole bunch of other villagers below the farm which you can then move around and use in farms and do with as you please. Now, practically this did look a little differently and what happened was that not all of the babies would fall through those gaps that we left before they turned into an adult. So in the end we were left with quite a bit more than two villagers at the top. This really isn't a problem for the farm, it actually still worked perfectly in the end. However, those villagers which didn't fall through the gaps would have been ones which we could have used in our farms, and in turn that would have sped the process up a little bit. However, I'm not complaining right now, no, don't worry guys, the complaining will come a little later when I'm moving the villagers, that's right. <laughs> but anyways, once the breeder was complete, I had to let the villagers breed up for a little bit. And I thought in the meantime to... I guess kill the time a little bit, I decided to construct and decorate the killing chamber for the iron golems. So the plan I had, like I mentioned in the previous episodes, was to have the iron golems fall through the island and land in the middle of our two storage areas that we built in the previous episode. So that in the end we will have a really nice view of all the iron that we're going to be collecting and all of the iron golems that we're going to be killing of course. <laughs> I know that in the previous episode I said that they would be falling to their deaths, which I have to say was probably poorly worded from my end guys. What I actually meant was that they will be dying down in that area and not that they will be, you know, dying from fall damage of course. So to keep with the overall natural theme that we're going with here, I thought that it would be pretty cool to have some sort of tree or something like that which was hollow in the center in which the iron golems can then fall down to. However, I also wanted to keep the golems visible while they were dying, so what we did was create some sort of vine-like structure, I guess, which wraps all the way to the top of the room, and then leaves some gaps in between that structure, which we will be later filling up with glass, so that we are able to see all of the action happening in the middle. And I have to say guys, I really am pleased with how this turned out. It took a long time to construct this area, just switching between the logs and the wood. It really was a lot of work, but yeah, overall, I am really happy with the look of it. And I just can't wait to build more stuff down here just to tie the whole area together.
guys, the killing chamber is complete and what we also did was work on the top area a little bit to again just tie the area together and have some sort of transition between the ground and the drop chute which the iron golems fall through. So the next step after this one was to build the iron farm I guess. So how I understood it, in order to keep the villagers separate, we need to build the farms at least 70 blocks away from each other. I also wanted to construct it quite a bit away from the ground so that I also had the option to use doors on our island in some creative builds or something like that without them messing up our drop rates or just breaking the farm or something like that. So <laughs> we started with the easy part, building the iron farm. And for this one we went with a nice and simple design which uses fairly little resources since I don't think we're able to get into the complicated designs like the Iron Phoenix from Tango or something like that. Although honestly thinking of how much pain it was building this thing, it probably would have been better to just go with that design from the beginning. But anyways, <laughs> the design that we're going for here is by 100% awesome, that's right, I had to check here. His name is 100% awesome, that's right. Which, yeah, which already has over 100 million views on the video. So I guess the design has to be good, you can't go wrong there. <laughs> so once the design was built, it was time to get the villagers up there. And yeah, I guess that's where the fun started. No, 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 no. Nope. Do No. Why? Why would you go there? Why? There's, there's perfect space here. Why would you go over there? Why would you do that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> this farm is going to be the end of me. Why? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, guys. I think I'm just incapable of working with villagers in Minecraft. I don't know, they're, they're annoying, they walk everywhere, they sound funny, and ugh, honestly, it actually made me feel a little better knowing that they'll be trapped in a glass cage way above the surface, which I guess is concerning a little, but you know what? I think we'll deal with that in another episode. So like you can see, we built a long minecart rail all the way to the top of the farm so that we can trap our villagers up there. This actually took way longer than it should have, and that was because I think I just kept messing up and making stupid mistakes. The villagers kept running away or they just kept popping out of their minecarts the wrong way or in the wrong direction where I wanted them to. And yeah, I think you get the gist of it. It really wasn't a pretty sight to see. But you know what, guys? I think it makes for good entertainment, right? I don't know. <laughs> and you know what the best part was, by the way? The whole time while I was working on this, I knew we had to build this thing all over again for the second farm that we are building right on top of this one. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I'm fine guys. I haven't thrown my computer out the window just yet and I am still alive so plus points there I guess. Now the original plan was to actually build eight more of these farms around the area. I don't know what I was thinking. In a design which looks something along the lines of this I guess. However, I think in the end I really just ran out of time and eight more farms will probably be a project on its own. So I think what I'll do is first of all see how the rates of these two farms are and then decide whether or not we need to build more. And if we do then we'll just keep adding more in future episodes as a sort of bonus content I think since I don't think you guys want to see another full episode of me failing at transporting villagers or, you know, just messing up the whole time. Another thing which we also have to address is the look of the farm, guys. I think right now the farm is just purely functional. The drop chute and the bottom of it, it does look a little fancy, but we really have to do something about the aesthetics of the farm so that it perhaps blends into the area or the sky a little better than it does now. 
And for this part, I'm actually hoping to get your input on this, since I'm really not too sure what we can do to make the farm look a little prettier. Who knows, maybe in a future video we'll just tear the whole thing down altogether and just build a more efficient design here. But I think that we'll have to do for now, for at least a couple of episodes. Oh, and one thing which I do want to mention before I forget, in the end we do change the design of the drop shoot a little bit. I really wanted to go for an asymmetrical design here like you can see now, but a problem which I kept on having was that the golems kept on falling out of the shoot. I tried plugging up the holes for quite a while off camera, but I think in the end I really just got frustrated and it just seemed hopeless. So what we did is we tore the whole thing down and went for a more symmetrical and safe design, I guess. But yeah guys, <laughs> that's basically what happened today. I hope you're enjoying the longer episode because it really did take a lot longer than I wanted to spend on this initially. And you know what? Leave me some feedback and also some ideas on what we can do in the next episode. I mean, we have an ocean monument just next to the island, which we could raid and collect some resources. But I'm open for a suggestion, guys. We can also start on, for example, a sugarcane farm or an automatic ore smelter. That would be cool. Or I guess some other redstone farm. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comment section. It is always great reading your feedback and your, your build ideas, what you got here. Anyways. If you liked the video, then smash the like button, guys. It really means a lot to me and shows me that you want to see more. But right now, I think the only thing left to say is sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the time lapse. No! <laughs> oh, that thing's staying there. <laughs> oh, God. No. Why? <laughs> oh, God. No. <laughs>